Recently, one city in Ohio had to ban all tourism and close its borders because too many people wanted to go there. And to everyone's surprise, it was all because of this restaurant, Altissima Desiderum, a place where the chef actually pays you to eat his incredible food. Marcus Zaro did something nobody thought possible. He reinvented food with dishes that look like this and desserts that look like this. Marcus's food is allegedly tailor-made for each of his guests and the chef is so rigid he made even Elon Musk himself sign up to the free year long waitlist with no special treatment. But recently one woman blew the whistle on his whole restaurant, Alex Smith, the woman behind the Picky Eater blog. It makes me sick to even think about it. Those images, his face, still haunt me every night. But I must tell you this story. Above all, people have to hear what happened. People need to see what we created. It all began six months ago in New York City. On my way back from the gym, I saw the ad for the first time. Altissima de Cirodum. Taste perfected. Opening soon. I've reviewed many restaurants here at Picky Eater, but from the moment I saw it, I knew something was different with Altissima. And so I pulled a few strings and got an invitation. Just a few nights later, Alex found herself shoulder to shoulder with the city's elite. Actors, politicians, models, music stars, and also many regular people who signed up first. Everyone was waiting in the line to see what Marcus had cooked up. Before they could enter, each guest was asked to give a swab of their saliva. This was the main idea behind the restaurant. They said they could use some high-end tech to analyze your saliva, your taste buds, and then produce a meal designed perfectly for you. I sat down and they brought out my first dish. It looked like a brain, a human brain, except all the spirals of the pinkish meat were filled with glittery sauce. I can't quite explain it, but it looked like some melted glitter. The staff assured me the meat was ethically sourced and that the shape was simply cosmetic, a statement of the chef. Then I took the first bite and it was unlike anything I ever ate. You guys know, I'm very specific about food. That's where Picky Eater blog came from. But this was something else. The texture, the taste, down to the smallest thing. It was perfect. It tasted nothing like I could imagine. Any disgust or hesitation was gone with the first bite. It was absolute bliss. That night, as she left the small luxury restaurant, Alex couldn't stop thinking about the meals she just ate. The money she got to eat that didn't even matter as a concept because the food itself was priceless, was bigger than money. Why would he pay to eat here while well, he could charge millions? She thought to herself. Hours later, she still had the taste on her tongue. When she swallowed, she'd get a small kick of the taste again. Just enough to keep it on her mind for hours to come. The following day, I couldn't get Altissima out of my mind. And so I went again the next evening. And again. And again. For whatever reason, he allowed me to come back as much as I wanted. It quickly became the only place I ate at. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. People had to book years in advance to eat here, and I had free access to it. I mean, even Elon Musk has to wait till January 2025 to eat here. And I was lucky enough to become addicted. Any other food couldn't even come close. Everything else tasted like ash. Now, with the constant flow of money I got from eating there, I was able to quit my job. My whole life became about Altissima Desiderum. I'd go to bed thinking about their breakfast cracked eye omelette. I'd wake up and the first thing I did was go there. I became such a regular that I even got to know Marcus, the head chef. Marcus, Marcus, Marcus. God. We'd talk about anything and everything. My struggles with eating disorders, his struggles with perfectionism. He shared with me his vision of changing the way people looked at food. I was under his spell from the moment I met him. Older, mysterious artist, creating disgusting wonders for my taste buds. He often described me as his kindred spirit. He said that conversations with me were the greatest delicacy. If I only knew then what I know now. One night, as I was waiting for my food, I asked him what Altissima Desiderum meant. Marcus just smiled and told me to come the following evening. He said he'd take me on a journey, show me the meaning and creation of his meals. The next night, 
Alex did what he told her to. She dressed up, unaware that her life was about to change forever. What he put in front of me was a simple waffle with a pale white glaze. This was it. There was no human brain or jello fingers set on fire or noodle powder in a spray can. This was Altissima Desiderum, and it was unlike anything I ever tasted. Of the dozens of meals I had there, somehow this stood above all the rest. It satisfied every craving I ever had. It was the perfect ratio of sweetness and sourness. The texture was divine. As I swallowed it, the colors of the world became different, brighter. This is going to sound crazy, but I felt like I was a different person. For the whole next day, I was riding this high. My mood lifted, I felt no stress or anger. Nothing really mattered anymore. I just had to know what it was. I needed to know how he made it. I needed more of it. Alex came back, craving more of that food. She would do anything to get it. She was ready to beg on her knees for it. But when she entered the restaurant on that fateful night, it was empty. No stuff, no waiters, no no guests, no Marcus. The whole place was dead, but I didn't care. I entered the kitchens, hoping to find Marcus, my fix, my answers, and I did find my answers, at least some of them. The whole kitchen was lined with shelves, vials, buckets. Inside of them were things Alex couldn't even imagine. Rats floating in jars of green liquid, cockroaches scuffling in huge glass boxes, vials and vials of blood. Animal blood? Bag? Human? She had no idea. Her senses were attacked from every possible angle. There was this rancid, horrible smell. It came from a bucket of rotting meat riddled with tiny white maggots. The room was incredible incredibly puzzling, but at the same time, incredibly uniquely modern. I'm not sure if it was the shock or whatever he put in my meal, but I barely noticed any of this. Thinking back now, I should have run away, but I didn't. I needed the food. I needed Marcus. At the end of the kitchen, I found his office and his journal inside of it. This was it. I was at least going to get some answers. I flipped through the pages and then came across something that made my blood freeze. A page titled Alex. It read, My delicacy, my dessert, my deepest desire. She was the piece I was missing, the final cherry on top, the final ingredient in my magnum opus, the embodiment of perfection. She's going to make my final feast so much more special. For years, I've planned to show all those careless, cruel bastards out there the depths of their ignorance, their eyes, always so hungry for more, their stomachs, so stuffed they could burst. I wonder what they'll think when they learn the truth. I wonder how they'll react when they know what I've gotten them all addicted to. Before I reached the end of the page, I heard the doors open behind me. I felt a sting in my neck and I fell into darkness. When I woke up, I was tied to one of the chairs in the main kitchen. Marcus's back was turned towards me. He was sharpening his knife. All around him, there were ingredients for one of his meals. A pot filled with writhing maggots boiling in the water. A huge meat grinder slowly churning strings of pinkish rat meat. A press crushing hundreds of screeching, hissing cockroaches. Right next to Marcus were jelly molds filled with thick blood. To the other side, he had at rows of these little cups filled with eyes, filled with teeth, filled with nails. I wanted to scream, to shout, to call for help, but my mouth was closed with tape. I could only watch in horror as he turned towards me and smiled. Finally, my deepest desire wakes up. Good morning, dear. I imagined this wasn't what you expected when you came to my restaurant today. No worries, you'll get what you want. I felt his knife dragging across the bare skin of my leg. God, you are exactly what I've been looking for. Beautiful, supple, sweet. I can't wait to serve you. I felt the tip of the blade crept across my stomach and then stopped just under my chin. His face was now close to mine, his breath 
nearly making me vomit. When I first imagined this restaurant, it was just a fever dream, a mad idea of an angry homeless man feasting on dead rats in the dark corners of New York. I watched people living their lives, passing me by without even noticing. I begged for food, but nobody would spare their leftovers on scum like me. So I had to eat whatever I could. I wanted to scream as he began to draw out which parts of me he was going to carve. The maca moved with surgical precision. Roaches, maggots, whatever I could get my hands on. Dog food was a rare feast when I could find it. <laughs> Community kitchens, leftover handouts, they never had enough for me. Even among the forgotten people of this damned city, I was last on the list. I ate what I could. I made feasts of the things people were disgusted of. Every time I ate. I remembered all the faces that ignored me every cold night, wondering what I would be forced to eat next. I wanted them to know what it was like. I wanted them to know how far they left me behind. He took his knife back out and began tracing thin lines across my skin, parts he could cut and use in his final meal. And so I changed my life. I got a job cleaning the restaurant, then climbed up the ladder, cleaner dishwasher, waiter, cook. I learned everything I could about what people love to eat. I watched as they carelessly threw away plate after plate, how they disregarded food that I could only dream of once. By then, to me, the food waste was like murder. Then I made this place. I used every single thing I was once forced to eat. I made meals out of them. But with each one, I added a few new ingredients. Doses of drugs too small for people to really notice, but just enough to trick their minds into getting addicted to my food. Not much different from what most fast food companies do already. I found homeless people that the city so easily forgot and then carved them into thin little pieces. A powder made from a tooth here or a human steak there. Everything I made here always had a human touch. But tonight... I can still see his white, perfect smile staring back at me. Tonight my guests get a treat. You. From the moment I saw you enter my restaurant, I knew you were it. My crowning achievement. My magnum over. They'll feast on you and then they'll thank me for it. I can't wait to see their faces once they learn what they've all been eating. All those privileged people who passed me on the street like I was a piece of trash now get paid to eat my food. Now we truly made a full circle. <laughs> I'm so glad I made the deal with that cartel. His eyes locked with mine, his hand raised, knife ready. I don't know what kicked inside of me. Adrenaline? Survival instincts? I don't know. But I swung my head hard. Everything after this happened so quickly. I loosened the rope while he was stunned, clutching his broken nose. Blood ran through his closed fingers. I remember dashing through that damned kitchen into a filled restaurant and begging someone to call the police. But nobody did. Everyone wanted to know where Marcus was. I could hear him calling after me and stumbling towards the dining hall. And so I ran out into the street and to the nearest police station. Police raided the restaurant. They found the guests and Marcus and they found all the evidence. I couldn't force myself to go to his trial. I couldn't even look at him after this. As I write this now, I can't help but still crave that taste, that perfection. I should have realized earlier Altissima desiderum, the deepest desire. And the worst of all is, I can see his point. Marcus was delusional. Marcus was mad. But Marcus was a monster we created by the way we live. The world is a tragic place. If you look at one side of it, you'll see people dying in poverty. People who are forced to eat grass or drink rainwater just to buy themselves one day. And then, look at the other side, and you'll see people who overorder food, only to throw it away in the bin. People who stuff themselves like pigs. People with no respect for food. 
I can't help but think he was right from a certain perspective. There's so many people in this city that we've forgotten. There's so much wasted food we just throw away. All we care about is ourselves, our satisfaction, our own cravings. And more often than not, our eyes are much hungrier than our stomachs. I can't change your mind. I can't tell you what to do, but I can tell you my story. So I beg of you, my picky eaters. The next time you can't fit that second fries into your stomach or want to throw that half-eaten burger into the trash, go out into the street. Find someone the world forgot about. Make their day a little better. The last thing I want is to look back at this world a couple of years from now and think that Marcus was right.